The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Sam Lovell, and I am the Partner Marketing Executive at Ordnance Survey, um, and I will be your host today. Today, we'll be going through the, the brand new Highways product with our Networks Product Manager, Mark LePage. So welcome to this webinar. Um, to start with, I'd just like to go over some few house rules. Um, you are all on mute to start with. Um, this is so you can carry on doing your work or typing, but also obviously um, reading in on, on the webinar itself. Um, questions can be answered throughout. You'll notice in the top right hand corner, there is an orange box with a white arrow. If you answer questions throughout this webinar, we will be answering them all at the end. Um, so if you wait till the end, that's when they'll be answered. Um, and just to let you know, this webinar is going to be recorded and the slides will be available at the end through our Partner Secure website. There will also be some polls during the webinar and there will be a quick survey at the end. So if you can take part in them, that will be great. So without further ado, I'd like to pass you over to Mark and I think we're going to start off with a quick poll. Mark. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending this webinar. Um, and thanks, Sam, for the introduction. Um, just to gauge a bit of an opinion from people about the level of knowledge, I thought we'd start with a quick poll um, just to get people, um, give people a bit of time to join in whilst people join about um, your level of knowledge of, of, of highways, just so I can judge how um, we're pitching this. So the question is, um, what is your current level of knowledge of highways? Thanks, everyone. So we've got a good good variation of uh, people that have got knowledge on from no knowledge to some knowledge, so that's good. So I'll, I'll probably try and cover this in a, a bit of detail. Got quite a lot to cover, so we're, we're, we're rattle through, but by no means is this the only communication we're going to do. So feel free to um, uh, get in contact with your account manager or, or directly to me, and, and we can always set up further information to, to give to you at, at your leisure. So starting back at the beginning, actually, uh, so what, what, what was the challenge that Ordnance Survey really wanted to try and solve? Well, one of the main bits is, is central government devolves a lot more of its responsibility out to local authorities. There's, there's a real onus to, to understand the information around um, the, the, what's going on on the roads, especially between the, the, the central and local government. But it's no different out to every market that we're, we're, we're running with. Everybody uses the roads. There's a lot of information about the roads. And we really sort of say, how do we make sure that everybody's responding to the same information from the people that are planning the roads to the people that are driving on the roads? And that's really what we're trying to do with highways is, is bring together a, a, a single base of information uh, that you can, you can understand and get the information you need from. However, traditionally, the, the applications that our, our network data sets have been used uh, are so varied and so many that actually we, we, um, we, we have um, information that serves all of these. And that's one of the big things and, and, and why Ordnance Survey focuses on, on open standards quite a lot, such as the GML standard, is because each of these applications has its own variance or own slight piece of information that, that it needs. So um, having on open, open standards um, really allows um, software and, and data to be independently replaced on, on those things. It's something that OS pushes for. But we're trying to serve a lot of applications and we're trying to serve a lot of information within those applications is, is, is really where we're coming from. So uh, what we've done is we followed a similar story to addressing out in, in the marketplace. So traditionally the, the, within the, the government arena, certainly there's been two data sets that, that they've really focused on um, using. There's been the NSG within an environment um, that, that really is the definitive and authoritative naming information from the local authorities. So the National Street Gazetteer really tells us about everything on that road about the maintenance and the um, who's responsible for that road and what the type of um, resurfacing information there is on that road. And then there's the Ordnance Survey Integrated Transport Network, which was mainly our focus about routing and how we get from A to B and what's the, the, the road name of that, uh, that road. But the real awkward moment came when actually, but what if you want to merge the two? There's organizations that use both. There's organizations that have access to both. What happened when you try to 
route along a network that's tried to find the definitive names or any special event information that's along that network. It starts to get a bit difficult and a bit tricky. So what we've done is really spent all of our time trying to combine the two existing data sets that, that um, exist to help there in the marketplace to really give us a, a, a complete view that, that somebody from central government all the way back down to local government and across to commercial arenas can understand and know the same bits of information about the network. So really what we've done is, is, is similarly to the addressing situation is, is used our, our sister company Geoplace to combine that information together for us from highways authorities and local, uh, local authorities and Highways England. And we do this through Geoplace and to directly to Ordnance Survey and really access the two, two or three key markets that we want to, which is about asset information and routing information. And along the way, we're able to bring in third party information. So we bring in statistical information from ONS um, and other bits and pieces like that. So we're really starting to create a platform to bring all this data together. And that's quite, quite an exciting prospect at that, uh, at that case. Right. Um, so what, what, what will be happening? Well, I'm pleased to announce that we'll be launching this or going live with this data set on Monday the 31st. So um, that's not long now. It's about five days, not that I'm counting, um, to get this data out the door. So really, we're, we're focusing on the merging of the ITN and the NSG information. Uh, communications have been going out in advance. So we would have received the information within the partner newsletter. Um, but we're also direct comms will be going out on Monday morning to announce that uh, we've successfully gone live with OS Master Map Highways. And we've got several events planned over October where we'll be taking highways and doing a more in-depth, and this is a, a, an infrastructure seminar on the 7th and 8th and, and launching um, uh, ex externally to the media on the 16th and 17th for the Highways UK event. So we do welcome anyone that wants to come along to that to, to, to join us at that event. Really what we're saying is with highways, we're focused on these three main areas. So the asset management information in routing and reporting. So really we're trying to focus on the, the asset managers, the utility companies and, and those people managing the, the highways. And we've got information that we're really focusing on um, the publicly maintained roads, uh, traffic sensitive streets, all the things that are in the NSG, net protected streets, reinstatement, um, definitive road name and numbering. And it's really fascinating joining those two data sets together because what we really start to uncover about those data sets is actually by, by combining two disparate data sets, you can really find out more about it by just understanding what that other person's doing. I often say it's like a piece of artwork. I have an interpretation, Sam might have an interpretation, but it's only when we discuss that piece of artwork do you really get a view of actually the whole story. And that's no different with roads on this case. We're really starting to uncover some different interpretations of what people mean by the road network. And that's making us make some different decisions about how we cut it up, split it and do things with it. And that's quite um, a really powerful to start to drive that. The routing, we're really focusing on planned routing, so ahead of the situation, um, we've got some partners that do some great work with uh, with live and dynamic routing, but really we, we haven't got those devices and we're really focusing on the, how do I plan ahead of it uh, at my event with, with, with stuff like that. So really we're focusing on a lot of the information that we've got roads under construction, where are new roads being built? This also helps with reporting, but where are new roads? What's gonna to happen tomorrow? How do I really plan for those events that are happening in the future? Um, we added, we are bringing footpaths information. So from our detailed paths data, we're starting to bring in that sort of information to look at alternative forms of routing to really start to help drive more information and more alternative um, types of navigation in no sense. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then finally, reporting. One of the big things that we do with our government customers is looking at reporting. So how many roads are public maintained at public expense? How many new roads are under construction in the year? What's um, the reinstatement? What roads have got different values of reinstatement? Where's the trans-European network? Where does that come into the data? So the e-road numbers. How many lengths of uh, kilometres of that road network are there. Um, 
and then how many bridges and tunnels, how many accidents are there on these types of information. So really looking at how they can do reporting consistently up and down throughout government and all know they're talking about the same network by us combining it together. <clears throat> really what Audience Survey are, are, are aiming for is actually the, being a bit different in the marketplace. As I said there, really we're focusing on planned routing and with devices out there, um, there's a lot of information being captured about, about the the road network on the road network. An audit survey clearly, as you probably well know, don't have devices out there in the marketplace, so we, we, we can offer those same sorts of services and information. So really what we're focusing on actually is about how can I tell you about the now and also tell you about tomorrow. So how can you plan for that future delivery tomorrow by telling you what's going to happen on the network the next day by planned events and information that's going on. And we've got a number of partners that have got some really valuable information that we can now tie together with all and survey data um, because of this merging with the USRN and the uh, the toy that we can really start to play some stuff out. So we're trying to differentiate ourselves in that in that sense. And this is one of the stories that we're keen to sort of promote for for what the data can be used for. It's the unseen road in that sense. So what we're really sort of starting to uncover and be able to tell is the things that you can't see on the road or capture on a road by um, uh, things like LIDAR and bits like that. And it's the bits that here's a road that's planned for construction over the back of these hills, um, the type of surface material, the type of information about that road, and who it's maintained by really for emergency services to suddenly go, actually, there's been an incident on that road. Who needs to resurface it? Who do I need to contact? And helping speed up all that paperwork. And actually, there might be some special events going on, or some information that actually we need to make aware of. The London Marathon might be a good thing to be able to report on, to say, actually, there's an event here. I shouldn't go out and do a road survey that day because my uh, traffic counts will be a bit low. And so really starting to see on that unseen road type information, plus a lot of other bits of information that we start to list that might be useful for people to see and know about that un uh, the unseen road. This is on top of all the applications we have about routing information, such as no-turn um, information, one-ways and, and, and no entries and all that information, and the vehicle qualifiers, which really prohibit the, tells you the vehicles that are prohibited from that street. So we're building up quite a lot of information that you can route along and the information about the unseen road. So Highways Network on its own has is, is got a lot of really valuable information, but what we're starting to say is and, and see is that the, the, the organizations are publishing more data around <coughs> excuse me uh, around information that could be connected to the network. So with OS Master Map Highways Network really being this bridging to lots of different data. So transport data, statistical information that the Department for Transport published, the speed data that links back to um, the TOID and, and, and what you can do with that information. There's information from local authorities that are starting to publish and hoping we can we can leverage more of that information being published and roadworks with through the USRN you can really start to unlock even more value from your business data. And actually that's key as well is that businesses have a lot of information about customers, streets and that information which also can be applied to the network. So really with this information what we can start to do is add more and more information depending on your application to the network to make more informed decisions and really start to unpick some of those things that you need to know about it, whether it's the fact that Southern Water are digging up the road, the fact that we've got uh, average vehicle count from Department of Transport or, or some historic speed data based on traffic survey um, and, and that type of information. A number of accidents from DFT in the last year, last five years may change situation you may change events that you put on that network because of the accident statistics of so really starting to give a whole range of information and open it up to more than that. I always do this, I always focus very much on the road network, um, but actually we're starting to bring in more much more of this path information together and make that more available. And really what we're starting to bring the information about how you can access these paths, type of obstructions on it, whether they're steps, subways, bridges, all those types of things to help inform better usage. Right in the center of the map, actually, there's a scenario that we say for delivery companies, um, it's actually could be better to um, walk between two areas rather than drive around because the distance around could be 10, 15 minutes, but actually there's just a, a quick shortcut through the uh, um, uh, alley, uh, through the 
over the water would be a much better scenario. So really starting to unlock all types of um, information with the PATH network as well to give that same sort of information. And we carry the same information that we do on the streets for these paths where, where we've got them. It's um, about the reinstatement values, whether they're, they're uh, um, officially even publicly maintained. So we can start to use this to build up a lot more information about, about those paths. <clears throat> One of the exciting things that we can start to do actually out of the back of this is the links to addressing. We can really start to focus on that uh, multiple links to addressing that we hold within the product. And there's the link to um, the USRN and there's the link to the toy which really start to drive some different applications. The link to USRN really focusing around the Streetworks applications and um, the number of properties that are on that 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 uh, road or we can really focus on the toy which is a precise location of the, the section of road that you, you would need to deliver about and as you can see from the um, image below that we can get some quite precise and accurate sort of drops or destinations for delivery drivers to get to. So we've got a bit of work to do on that. You see some anom anomalies in there, which actually start to do it. But the fact that we can link OS master map uh, highways to, to, to the address base now, really for the first time starts us to drive those issues out now, which is uh, really quite exciting and start to fix a lot of these um, anomalies that we've had in the past, which is really potentially exciting for us to, to fix. Um, it's probably a, a, a given for a lot of it, but we, we take all the traditional routing information that we, we had within the integrated transport network, the term restrictions, and we could create some working um, routing applications based upon the network that we've got here, taking into account turn information and, and, and that sort of stuff. Um, so that's still quite, it's still got the valuable information that we've seen a lot of value from our use cases across, across the sectors to, to using that information. Some of the um, interesting propositions that we're really pushing out of highways is, is actually conveyance in market. And here we, we see some of the interesting information that um, conveyances are wanting to sort of understand from it. How many properties are on that street? What is the property on that street? Is the road maintained at public expense? Um, how many other uh, properties are uh, categorized as retail outlets or industrial that, that, that also sit on that network? that you can really start to do some informed property decision or property making with this joined up information that, that we start to pull in. So uh, probably clear to add that some of those um, use cases pull in a number of data sets such as addressing and things like that. So it's not all contained within there, but we can bring together more of the data sets that we're, we're, we, we've got at Ornan Survey to start to un uncover and, and join up some of those applications. One of the other ones is delivery. We're really sort of focusing on the delivery front for this uh, uh, by, by having the detailed geometry and detailed uh, routing information. We can really start to uncover how we, we, we create the best routes and using the path information to really focus on actually there might be better alternative routes to delivery than just, just on the road itself. Um, so we, we, we take that information and actually building in other things like address, um, we can start to have some really accurate and, and, and detailed delivery points. But actually, as you saw in the previous slide, uh, where we joined together data from other sets, it's not just about us. Customers have a lot of good information. And one of the big things that we've seen that want this data want to be used for is local transport services. So bringing in combinations of addresses um, of where people have pass hold, passes or where people um, capture routes, we can start to really build out and, and, and understand alternative routes where new roads are under construction, where these new routes might come into effect and how they might change bus routes and services. And, and, and one of the propositions that we're looking over the next six months is a heighted network. So actually, depending on the age of the demographic, we can judge better where to put bus stops and new infrastructure because we can really start to say where the, um, where the challenges are for those, uh, um, that, that population. I said one of the big areas as well for us is asset management. We're really focusing on, on what utilities can do uh, more than just with the two data sets on their own. How can I start to plan my um, utility works, but also how can I then from there figure out how to get my vehicles and my, my stuff to the destination? So more than just 
a, a, a one-off answer for stuff it sort of starts to the workflow starts to become more realistic and how I can pin applications together to tell me a meaningful answer that, that can start to have better cost and better understanding of the whole job for my for my business who where am I going to park how am I going to get there what's the uh, type of uh, restrictions that I can follow on the way what's the reinstatement values and what is the USRN fundamentally that I I, I have to dig to, to to repair this road or fix a, a, a leak and as I mentioned before with the reporting we're really focusing on how we can get statistical reports back up to government and back across even uh, commercial organizations about about what what's on the road and what matters how can I improve times how can I cut down so really starting to have a, a, a lot of persistent identifiers to pin information to to have consistent and accurate reporting on, on, on information so you can you can judge whether um, you're making improvements within your organization so fundamentally what we've done is uh, here's, a, here's a, a file that tries to illustrate all the things but effectively what we're saying is that everything on the left um, of these images, is is a is a combination of what we produce and, and put into highways so it's um it's as it's as good and better than the sum of its parts in all of these instances and really we're saying that highways gives us a complete overview of all the items that are in um the nsg and integrated transport network of its varying offering we've also done a lot on the um uh, weights and whips which was a, a a commercial attributes file but we've now been maintaining that and brought that into into the product as a, a maintained link rather than the one-off lookup file that it, it was previously. Um, so we're really pleased to be bringing that information into it now. So what we're trying to do is actually support the marketplace by putting a, a, a series of, of webinars together, which you will see on some of the support pages. But over the next month or two, we will see more of these webinars come out, which are really guiding people of how to use the product and what information to, to, to we're providing within that product. And also and on that note, I'd, I'd like to also promote the FME workbenches that we've put onto uh, a, a GitHub. So we're really sort of trying to help customers to, to understand and give them a, a head start when using um, the data to say, here's something that you can get using with. So feel free to go onto GitHub or from our support pages or directly and have a look at those FME workbenches if you if you want to get started with that um, uh, uh, with those workbenches and really starting to load that state of data into a format that, that you may want or use within your systems. So we've tried to provide a bit more information to, to get people started and get people going. And our videos seem to be quite helpful in, in those fronts to giving people some ideas of how they might want to use the data and, and just, just giving people all the advice we can give them really. Cool, cool sorry. Um, so at this moment, I'd just like to give a bit of steer actually to some of the, the, the pits of information into it. We've got three product variants, I suppose, of the highways network, roads, routing, and asset management and paths. And any of you familiar with the ITN product will be very familiar with the way this sort of structures. On the roads, um, sorry, on the roads front, we've got a uh, basic link and node geometry with ferry information. Um, one of the nice additions that we've done based on the feedback we've got over a long period of time is we've, we're starting to um, tell you the actual route of the ferry rather than being a direct uh, line between A and B. Um, so it won't run over land and go around some items just joining ferry ports. So we tried to introduce more of that information to, uh, uh, upon request of a lot of people. But it's the basic geometry and street information and road information. So this is where we combine some of the basic information from the NSG and some of the information from All and Surveys ITM into Highways Network. The street information will carry the roads under construction, so we'll really be telling you about what's coming. So for those people publishing um, uh, atlases and things like that, you can start to say, actually, this motorway is going to be built within the next year, so therefore I'll publish it as a road under construction in my uh, atlas so people can wait necessarily need to update so regularly or you could hold it back so they need to buy a new copy in the new year depending on how you feel so we really start to give the basic information about the network that people can start to use and display information for uh, in gazetteer type search information and this fundamentally joins together as, as described here all pinned around the link and node network 
I've included this slide. I don't intend to talk about it this much, but when you when you um, got access to the slides later, we it's certainly one of those um, good slides for your development teams to reference back. So this is how the data all joins together through the relevant tables. So basic, but mainly joined together through the IDs and this and the um, unique um, references with each of the data sets. So really, this is a fundamentally great slide for the development teams to really figure out how to join the tables or which tables to relevant are relevant for them to join together um, to create the information. The next one we talk about is the path information. So here we combined all the information into uh, one uh, sort of paths package um, uh, with pedestrian ferries in there, um, the street information where it is maintained, at, uh, 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 where we have information from the local authorities on that and therefore like the routing and asset which will come onto you've got maintenance reinstatement special designation information about those paths so where there is an obligation to open keep that path open or maintain it to a certain standard that information was in there so this is essential for the utility companies to also know where there might be better places to lay cables in the sense that actually there's path networks or there's other 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 areas better than the road to lay a cable to, to avoid disruption at a later point, later time. And once again, here's the model where we start to introduce the, uh, the, the paths information through connecting nodes and connecting links, where we start to say, you've got a choice of how you build your network, um, whether it's just road based or whether it's pedestrian navigation based about, about joining that back to the network, um, the base core road network to, to build that up. And once again, I've added the relational paths of how, how this all links together. So you can see the, the, the main categories there, maintenance, reinstatement, and special designation all join back to the street. Um, and the uh, um, connecting nodes, connecting node, um, sorry, excuse me, path node connect back to the road links in that sense. So really fundamentally building up all that information into some, some logical packages with the IDs. And finally, the routing and asset information is where really all the, 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 the existing information such as the routing information and the, 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 the NSG information is really stored in this. So we have our access term restrictions. What we try to do with this is create them in neat packages, whereas before all the data would be served within one big GML file, you'd have to pick out the things that you wanted. What we're going to have going forward is access restrictions as its own GML file, term restrictions as its own GML file and restriction vehicles and so on and so forth all the way through. And really this is to allow you to choose the packages you want. You could translate all of those if you see fit and you could just work your way through all the files or you could just choose the ones that are relevant for your application. So if you have no interest in maintenance, why make you go through the whole file and, and, and convert it? Just leave that file out. So we've really structured the GML to be independent of each other to give you lots of um, variables when, when, when coming to translating the information that you need. And of course, like the uh, uh, integrated transport network, we build that on top of the, the uh, link and node network with uh, that you saw in the road, the road product from before. So really it builds up a little bit something like this. We've got the basic linear network model for anybody that's got a, an Inspire um, uh, compliance hat on. Um, we really build up that network from the linear network and then we've got the rights and restrictions advisory and asset and management information relating to those networks below. And this is how it builds up again into, into those packages. So fundamentally three main packages that, that, that join up to the street, the road link or the road node. Now a new addition that we brought along to this is actually the, the restrictions for vehicles. We have a... Um, if we have a position along the uh, road or a position on the road, such as a, a bridge height, what we've done is um, given you the node that is accessible, that it is referenced to, but we've also given you the two links that that is um, also relying to. So if it's a bridge and there's four links on it, we will give you the two links that go underneath for a bridge height restriction. And that's key now for multiple different applications that want to use it in different ways. Some applications might want to use it on the node to know where all the restrictions are, and others might want to just apply that restriction to the link to not let any traffic go down that link. So really sort of being able to give that information um, 
in various different forms for you to choose how best to use that in, in, in the application that you, 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 your end application. We've got quite a, uh, we've had quite a big timeline of information that we've been dealing with. So we, we released this data out in March in sample form or evaluation form, should I say. Um, and then we're coming up quickly up to the 31st of October where we launched the official sort of version of, of um, and commercial terms of highways um, for, for people to start to use. We've got a series of events, a uh, series of events that we're taking this out to now between now and the new year, but we've also got then a, a, a new version of, I say new version of highways, we've got some incremental in, improvements to highways between now and, and April next year. So in the sample data that we've provided in the last few weeks, um, there is all the information that you need for that sample data. So we're, we're looking at introducing um, width information based upon the topo topographic areas. We're look, looking to introduce um, uh, heighted information and you will see all of that built into the uh, uh, current sample data. Um, and we look to progress and, and release that data between uh, before uh, in April, March, April 2017. So we'll start to enable this data to be ordered through Goose, um, uh, our generic online ordering system. So for those of you partners that, that want to go online and order the data, we can just provide that through 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 you to you at that point. So we're allowing you to order this data as per you would expect on normal um, sticking points, um, normal data. There are a few sticking points that we've got at this moment in time. I think the, the one of the major things is that we've had some problems producing COU, basically trying to, to identify change across all those different data types. And so we've had to delay the COU until March next year. So we'll be really pushing out sample data in February for that um, and then and giving, giving people a chance to, to work with the change only update information. And also because of that, also we've got, um, uh, we can only place MGBS orders for, for uh, at the moment. So We've got some issues around the areas of interest, so therefore um, we're working through those issues and getting that stuff out. But it means as a partner, you can take that information and provide that out uh, how you see fit or easiest to do. So we're trying to work those issues through and get those get those resolved as quickly as we can. But I think consequently, what this means is we 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 have delivered a lot with OS Mastermind Highways. We've we've merged two big data sets together and 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 actually combined a lot of third party data in there as well with um the like I said the ONS and the the European routes and so really what we're starting to do is is, is provide much more information um, to the current network that, that we had and as I mentioned before we've as with any project we've got a few things that we're, we're delivering in um, in November so you will see that data trickle through um, uh, the information in in the November update and then we've got a big March update with um, uh, the width and height and public rights of way information and special events information um, that coming through from the local authorities uh, and the update in uh, summer of 2017 which will have lane information so this is capacity really focusing on capacity not directional information so we haven't um, uh, say in getting the left hand lane uh, to go to Manchester is not not one of the things we're focusing on this is about capacity planning and for that information to really say Actually, this this network has three lanes, and we really want to focus on how much capacity that that network can take. Um, so, just a short bit on pricing and licensing. You would have seen uh, a lot of information come out in the partner newsletter. What we've um what we've tried to do and maintain here is that we're providing a lot more content here, but but what we've tr wanted to do is 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 try and keep the uh, pricing the same for the national sets in this instance. So. What we're really focusing on here is that you've got the path information, the the, the roads information, and the re routing and asset information on on that. And sorry, I just noticed there's a typo on that screen, but I'll fix that to to get that up for the pricing for the um, national set of Rami that should be 174. Um, so we're really trying to focus on keeping that pricing the same because we 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 realise that we've had the same sort of content over the last goodness knows uh, 11. 12 years for OS master map uh, ITN and really what we're trying to do is is, is say actually we've we, we're way beyond we should have provided additional content and this is what we're trying to do with highways is say here is additional content for those people that are still 
um, wanting to use that product and maintain that product and, and, and here's the value that you're getting out of it with all this additional content over the over time. There's also a change to the density grid. Fundamentally, what we're doing is, is, is you've probably heard stuff around it. We're moving to more of a content themed approach. And really what we realized with the density grids is, firstly, we hadn't updated the density grids in 2005. So they were long overdue uh, a, a, a change to, to bring it in line with where the data had, had, had been a, um, improved and been captured. But also we've stopped charging for zero density tiles um, in in that sense, so so there's no longer there's 94,000 tiles that 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 aren't charged for in this sense. So um, we would have treated zero or low density tiles, and now what we've done is remove that because we realise there's uh, obviously there's no value in those tiles. And so this is this has changed a lot of the things of we've recalculated how we calculate those densities and remove the zero tiles um, effectively to to bring it up. So this has had a slight effect on the new content for pricing the tiles in that, in that sense, and you see the table there. So we'll come on to a slide about the partner licenses, but effectively it's 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 very similar to, to the ITN, and you come on to the partner license, what that means, um, except we've not charged for the zero tiles, and we've sort of changed the information that we um, charge on per, per tile. Um, in that sense, to bring it in line with the more additional data that you, you, you've been getting and the, the, the reduction of the zero tiles. So for some of the astute that are really good at mathematics, might have just calculated that that tied by the number of um, high, medium, low density tiles is more than the national set. So we cap the price a, a, a number of tiles to, to make sure that you'd never pay over that, 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 that limit in that sense. So um, we're keeping that, keeping that clear. And really what we've done as well is brought the information out from um, the partner license. So this is a snippet as best I can get onto a slide from those massive amounts of documents that you have about the partner license. But we've pretty much kept the value of those licenses the same for your for your usage. So you can really start to start get the benefit from from this information, that the, the new additional information that we're getting on the current licenses that we've got. So please do talk to us about, about that information. And one of the quick ones, I suppose, we're kind of drawing to an end now, so sorry I've talked at you for close to 40 minutes, but um, one of the things that we just wanted to sort of promote at the end is the OS Open Road stuff. One of the big things that we're doing um, in October as well is it's coming out of beta into its uh, a live production environment, um, and also the Open Roads lookup. What we're providing with the premium product is a lookup to the Open Roads. So this is one of the things we've been asked for, to, for people to publish statistics against people that are capturing and storing statistics against the detailed highways network really have asked to be able to publish or look up to be able to publish out against open data so imagine a government organization that captures roads statistics and and, and, and information um, being able to publish how many accidents there are where traffic counts are happening where surveys are to be able to aid and fund people to build a, a different types of applications. So we're really starting to look at how pub people can publish more information about the road out there against our open open data products in, in, in that sense. So we've created this lookup, which we expect to, to be uh, really quite a, a nifty tool for people wanting to publish data out into the open data community. And that brings it to a close. I'm sorry it's a bit of a, a, a rush through um, highways. I, I, I clearly like to talk but I did want to talk at you for the whole hour um, so now we're open up to some questions but don't 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 leave it there if you have any further information that you need or feel you want to get us to come and talk to you more then we're more than happy to to come down and and, and talk to you get in contact with your account managers um, and get in contact with myself directly and we'll be more than happy to come and visit you and give you some in-depth assistance where you are uh, um, where you are uh, where you need it Okay, thank you very much, Mark, for that. That was really informative. Um, so if you look at the top right-hand corner of your screen, you'll hopefully be able to see an orange box with a white logo. Um, if you click on there, you'll then find the question area. So if there's any questions that you would like to uh, ask, um, please um, put them in there, and we will go through them now. Um, you will remain uh, anonymous, so we will not be um, putting out any names. Um, so, yeah, please fire away. Okay, Mark, so the first question we have here is, what is the future of ITN? When will this be drawn? Withdrawn? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and thanks for raising that, actually. 
Uh, so our plan is uh, we, we have quite an aggressive withdrawal on this for Ordnance Survey. We're going to have a two and a half year withdrawal plan to get the stuff. So by um, uh, 20, April 2019, we're planning to have withdrawn ITN um, from the marketplace. So what we're doing at the moment is launching ITN. So in, in the new year, we will be going with the official withdrawal, but we're not um, hiding the fact that actually we're, we're planning on a two and a half year withdrawal of ITN. Okay, um, thank you. So the next question is, you have mentioned that this covers England and Wales. Does it cover Scotland? If not, when will it be available? So the data we eventually got, the base network that we, we, we've got is, um, is GB based. So it's England, Wales and Scotland in the sense, but you're quite right in the fact that the um, National Street Gazetteer information that we're gathering is uh, for England and Wales only. So it's probably clear to say that we're working with, with Scotland on this, and I think we've said that in the last webinar, we're, we're still working with Scotland to, to work up the best way to provide that information, which isn't um, easy for, for, for the um, technicalities of that stuff. So it's fair to say we're working on that, and we hope to bring you more information um, when, we, when, we, when we can on that front. Okay, thank you. Uh, how frequent will the COUs be once available in March 2017? So, uh, OS MOSMAP Highways Network is a monthly product, so when COU is delivered, it will be made available on a monthly basis. And this information will be, um, you can order change only update at any time up to a year. So, if you came in on the 1st of January and then uh, the 1st of January the following year you could order just the change for that entire year is the anticipation that we're going with at that point. So really we're trying to work up for those people that take it at different time periods um, throughout the year we can really provide that change early update for when the date it suits you because we realise with networks people take it at different frequencies, take it uh, uh, monthly or they might take it quarterly or six monthly or yearly. Um, so we can provide COU for any of those periods. But our aim is monthly, have a regular supply of monthly COU. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mark, you mentioned sample data being released of the highways data set. Is this available to the public? Uh, so the data, we re we've released two sets of data to, uh, depends what you mean by public. So if you mean our customer markets, then yes, so uh, public sector, commercial and direct. Um, when we say public, it wouldn't be the general public um, are very unusual for them to use highways but uh, in effect has been made available the PSMA have had the data as well as the partners and direct under evaluation since June but a sample data has been made with all the completed attribution just to partners only um, for you to just get used to and build into your systems at the moment so the sample data has only been made to partners but there has been data available to the public sector, all other sectors, since April this year. Okay. Uh, Mark, could you elaborate on the road adoption attribution, and is this national coverage? Uh, so the road adoption, uh, the maintenance, so maintained at public expense uh, attribute is only for England and Wales at this time. So in previously mentioned with the Scotland data, uh, we're trying to, to work with them to get them included, and we'd love to include that, but at the moment it is only England and Wales. Mark, how confident are the OS that you have complete coverage across GB of all the new features, example, gates, bollards, etc.? Uh, so, yeah, so how confident are you? So that's a good question. So we, we, we're pretty confident in our um, capture of features. All the audit results that we've got of, of features are quite high, and we get those. We clearly won't have captured all. I'm never going to defend that we have all features because uh, I think it's a virtual impossibility with the, the way we survey. Um, but we're confident in a lot of those things. I think the ones that you've mentioned there, gates and bollards, are probably the gates, for example, are probably the, one of the hardest ones because um, a date of surveying the gate is, 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 is locked or when we find out information, but that doesn't mean that that gate can't un be unlocked and then opened several weeks later. So we're fairly confident we've got high, high, high um, uh, audit results back through for that stuff, so we're quite confident with the majority of our stuff. I think at some ends of the spectrum, as you mentioned, gates and bollards, I think we're confident that we've got them, but they sort of trail off a bit more than the 99% that we... 99.8% uh, that we would, would like in those instances because they're seen as less um, relevant.
Thank you. Um, so speed data was referred to in one of the slides. Will speed limit information be included? Uh, no, this hasn't got, uh, we haven't got speed limit information within the network. We've got um, several partners that offer speed limit data um, with this information. Okay, uh, will ITN link toys easily uh, map to highways? Um, will ITN toys? Yes, they will. So, the, uh, think, sorry, it just took me a while to twig there. Um, so, the toys uh, are taken from the same core database, so therefore they should be consistent. And uh, yeah, so we're, high, we're very confident they will be consistent across the two data sets. Thank you. Um, how can I use this to identify unadopted roads? Um, so it's probably just clear to say that, that um, when we talk about adoption, we, we're talking about maintenance uh, roads, so whether they are maintained at public expense. Um, adoption and, and maintenance are subtly different, but the information that we've, we've gathered of, is about whether this is maintained at public expense. This information will be in the maintenance records, uh, which is in the RAMI product. Uh, the, routing and asset management product. Thank you. Um, will highways be made available to PSMA customers? Yes, definitely. So this is uh, going out uh, 31st of October to all customers, PSMA um, uh, mainly allowed. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Uh, so this is, uh, we haven't got to an agreement with Osmod about its inclusion into that, but we're confident and, um, and hopeful that it will go in there because uh, of the ITM withdrawal. So we're working that through with Osma, but certainly most definitely it will be available to PSMA. Okay, um, a couple more questions. So any plans to include road gradient chevrons as per uh, 150 and 125K uh, raster maps? Uh, so we're not gonna include the chevrons, but we are gonna height the network between now and uh, March next year. So actually that heighted network will I think with our detailed path network, we had this concept of up and um, uh, which we really look at actually the steepness of those those bits. So not only are we dependent on, we can calculate what is valid as a, uh, a steep gradient to your application now, rather than um, what Warning Survey has determined. So by putting the height on it, we feel we can calculate a better value um, than the the, the chevrons on the 50 foul and 25k raster maps. Okay. Uh, what additional information are you hoping to add for public rights of ways? No, that's a good question. Sorry, I didn't touch on that actually. So in the in the um, public right of way attributes that were coming through in in um in March, what we're really taking this from is a term called the highways dedication. So it's not the legal extent of a public right of way, it's probably clear to make, but this is an indication that this road has a public right of way on it. So really for the streetworks applications, we're indicating that if you are going to be digging up this road, there's different types of applications that you need to submit knowing that there is probably a public right of way in it. But it's no in, no by no means the legal extent of the public right of way for this. It's just an indication that this road or path has a public right of way on it, so you might want to know it, which is also useful for conveyancing terms. Thank you. And final question, is the highway's maintenance data, um, which roads are publicly maintained, uh, as accurate as requesting this information directly from a council? Um, so we would always recommend that, that actually this is, is a, um, probably an indication of, 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 of that information. If for final reports and information, we would say that you still follow the same principle and get the information of the council, but certainly for an early heads up um, indication of what type of uh, uh, information is on that or when I'm buying a property, it's certainly a good a good first port of call to raise any risks early on in a project or in a, in, in a, in a scam. I don't think this is ever going to replace the um, the building reports or the, 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 the site surveyed stuff where you get that information um, qualified, but it's certainly the, 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 the good basis to start those information. Thank you. Um, okay, this will be the last question. It's just come through. Um, uh, so can highways be used for analytics along with Topo? Yeah, definitely. I've, I've mentioned it uh, briefly. Uh, sorry, touched on it um, briefly with the addressing stuff, but really we're focusing around that family of products between Topo addressing. So we carry through and, and improve some of the links to topographic references um, and the links to address base in there as well. So really as a suite of products, you can really start to um, get the value and get the benefit between those by 
driving much more analytics about number of properties on a road, width of the road, total area of roads, um, and, and, and if, if it's got some clever software, what the type of um, pavement around that road is and, and how much areas and all that sort of stuff. So really the analytics between the, the addressing the road and the topographic areas around it, we can really start to, to, to drive much more um, uh, applications for those things. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, okay, that's all the questions, Mark. Um, thank you very much for joining us on this webinar about the new Highways product. Hopefully that's given you a lot more information than you already knew. Um, if there's any other questions, Mark is available to talk to. Otherwise, you can talk to your account manager as well, who will be able to assist you with that. So have a lovely day. Enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you very much again. Thank also, you. Uh, just to let you know, the slides will be available um, on our Partner Secure website, along with a recording of this presentation, which you'll be able to, to re-watch um, at your own leisure. Thank you.